This video was sponsored by Matrix Fire Safety. This is literally the first time I've ever had a problem, and what I found out doing this honestly came as a huge shock to me. Put her in the water, put her in the water. Drex here from Drex Factor Poise, sharing with you the love of poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, we're talking about options for that most important piece of fire safety equipment, your safety blanket. Before we dive in, I just want to do a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. There's probably no more common or frequently used piece of fire safety equipment than the blankets that we use to safety spot performers. Whether it's putting out lit props, helping to extinguish unlucky performers, or even just being a literal comfort blanket as we navigate the risks of a dangerous but manageable hobby, fire safety blankets are as essential to us as our props or our dip cans. The most common options for blankets usually break down to one of the following three. A garden variety towel that's been soaked in water, a theatrical duvetine, that is a section of wool that's been treated with a fire resistant chemical, or the Nomex blankets made by Matrix Fire Safety. Traditionally, I'd say that they run in effectiveness from least to most effective in that order too, with a wet towel being the least effective, duvetine being more so, and finally the Matrix blanket being the most effective. But I wanted to actually run each of these options through their paces and find out for sure. And what I found out doing this honestly came as a huge shock to me. So how did I go about this? Well, I came up with six criteria and decided to put some blankets to the test. I performed each of these tests with four different blanket options. First up, a dry beach towel to use as a control, a beach towel that had been soaked in water and wrung out, a duotine, and finally, one of my trusty Matrix fire safety blankets. And as for the individual tests themselves, I split them into three challenge tiers. My tier one challenges were the most common uses for fire blankets that I've seen personally. Namely, putting out props near the end of a burn or putting out a person that has accidentally lit themselves on fire. To do the first test, I invited my friend Mufasa over and we practiced putting out each other's sets of poi after a three minute burn. Long enough that the poi are probably starting to burn down, but still fresh enough that they're not just gonna go out completely on their own. Many a beginner has had to be put out like this when they run out of either energy or interest. So how'd each of the blankets do? Not surprisingly, the Matrix blanket did the job lickety split. I didn't even have to hold the prop inside the blanket. It did the job all on its own. The Matrix blanket passed with flying colors. Additionally, the duvetine held up really well here too. Like the Matrix blanket, it did a great job of putting out the poi heads with minimal fuss. The duvetine also passed this test easily. How about the wet towel? Again, it seemed to be able to put out the poi with minimal effort. No complaints here, the wet towel passed. And the dry towel? To my great surprise, it was also able to put out the poi with minimal effort. It picked up some soot and char in the process, but it also got the job done. The dry towel passed. So what about putting out a performer who'd accidentally lit themselves on fire? For this test, I acquired a mannequin and clothed it in one of my old hoodies. I mimicked the real world circumstances under which contact flames happen by taking a freshly dipped poi head and rubbing it across the front of the mannequin to transfer fuel onto it. I lit the fuel, gave it five seconds to burn unchecked, and started from the top of the flames and swept down with the blanket. So how did each of the blankets do? Again, unsurprisingly, the Matrix blanket had no problems extinguishing the fire. This was also probably the most intense fire that was created during this part of the demonstration. Nonetheless, the Matrix got the job done. It passed. Similarly, the duvetine had few problems putting out the simulated contact flame. No fuss here. Sweeping down and the flame disappeared, no problem. The duvetine passed. Likewise, the wet towel got the job done pretty easily too. I will say that the wet towel was quite noticeably heavier than all the other options, but it still got the job done. The wet towel passed. And that dry towel? Again, to my great surprise, it totally got the job done as well. The dry towel passed this test too. Who knew? So for these basic tasks that nearly everybody is going to have to engage in with a fire safety blanket, each of these options was surprisingly more or less equal to the task. So let's move up to our second tier tests. Starting here, we're going to start encountering tests that are statistically less likely and also a little bit more dangerous, but there's still situations you're not unlikely to encounter. The first test here is a circumstance that's kind of rare, but nonetheless one that it's good to be aware of, and that's a dip can fire. If you've seen my video on paint can versus ammo can for dipping, you'll know that your best bet here is to cap the can. But what if for whatever reason you're unable to seal the container? A safety blanket is a good next step. So how do all the blankets stack up on this test? 
Just like when I ran this test on the ammo can, the Matrix blanket did a fantastic job of putting out the dip can fire quickly and easily. No muss, no fuss. The Matrix blanket passed this test. And similarly, the Duvetine turned out to be quite effective at putting out a dip can fire as well. Simply throwing it over and holding it down for a few seconds did the trick. The Duvetine passes this test as well. Likewise, the wet towel did the job too. I did notice a minor sizzling noise when I put the towel in contact with the can, but job well done nonetheless. The wet towel passed. And the dry towel? Again, to my great shock, it also worked. This one kind of surprised me, but here we are. The dry towel passed as well. The next test in this tier is a variation on one of the tests from the first. Putting out a prop, but this time it's only been lit for 30 seconds. It does happen sometimes that when people light up, they find they have to abort within the first minute. And this is the most difficult window of time to end the burn in. So how did all our blankets stack up? While the flames were noticeably bigger and hotter, I was able to put out these poi with minimal effort using the matrix blanket. Just two folds, a burrito roll, and left it for five seconds. I didn't even have to hold it. The matrix passed. When we tried this same test with the duvetine, it did not fare so well. We also patted it several times and that likely didn't help. We actually had to grab the matrix blanket to help put it out. The duvetine did not pass this test. And how did the wet towel do? It actually put out the poi very handily and almost instantly from what Mufasa and I could tell. The wet towel passed this test as it turns out. And finally, how did our control, the dry towel, do? To both mine and Mufasa's absolute amazement, it also managed to put out those fresh poi heads. Again, it picked up some charring and soot, but other than that worked. The dry towel passed. So here's where we get to our tier 3 tests, one of which is just purely based around functionality and the other around something that turned out to be deceptively difficult. The first of those tests just quite frankly revolves around how easy the blanket is to use, care for, and its durability. The matrix blanket, the duvetine, and the dry towel are all ready to go at a moment's notice and require no prep. The wet towel, on the other hand, you have to soak it and wring it out, and then once you're done with it, leave it out to dry it, lest it soak whatever it's stored with or start to grow mildew. That's clearly not the end of the world, but it takes more planning to work around than any of the other options. To say nothing of the fact that if you're doing a gig in the dead of winter, it's possible for the blanket to freeze into a block of ice. Then there's care for the blanket. The matrix blanket, wet towel, and dry towel can all be washed to remove soot, debris, or any lingering fuel. And of course, odor. It's a small thing, but I kind of like being able to store my blanket in my apartment without stinking the place up. But as many of you will know, you cannot wash duvetines. Technically, duvetines aren't actually meant for outdoor use. Exposure to moisture starts to dissolve the fire-resistant chemical that they're soaked in, and it can sometimes be difficult to tell when a blanket is still properly treated and when it's not. You can get your duvetines retreated and recertified, but it's not an easily accessible process. So most people just replace their duvetines every so often. And we have to talk about durability. Just in the course of this test, both the dry and the wet towels picked up quite a bit of soot and char. They were both still usable afterwards, but I think they'd likely have to be replaced on a pretty regular basis if used with any frequency. As we'll find out in a moment, the duvetine fared worse than the towels for our final test. and. Let's be real, everyone has seen a threadbare duvetine hovering around at some point. And the matrix blanket? It also took on some damage during this test. Some of the worst I've ever seen a matrix blanket take, in fact. But as it stands, that blanket is still usable. When it comes to usability, I'm gonna give the matrix blanket a pass with mixed grades for all the others. For the final test of this tier, we're gonna expose these blankets to one of the most notoriously difficult props to extinguish that I have access to namely a dragon staff. For this final test, I had Mufasa spin an old dragon staff I had lying around for two minutes before putting the prop out. I used a technique that I learned a few years ago that involves folding up the edges of the blanket around the spokes of the dragon staff's wicks and holding the blanket corners tight against the center staff. Now, I had only ever used this technique before on dragon staffs that did not have a fifth central wick and thus could sit flat inside of the folded up blanket. That would turn out to be an incredibly important detail because that fifth wick not only made it more difficult to cover up the end entirely, there was also way more air enclosed within it that the wicks could burn through as I was trying to put the prop out. So how did the blanket stack up? This is literally the first time I've ever had a problem with a matrix blanket. It put out one end of the staff with some difficulties, but for the life of me, I couldn't get the other end without bringing in a second blanket to contribute to the task. This also resulted in some serious damage to the edge of the blanket. It's still usable, but I was pretty surprised by this result. The matrix blanket? 
actually did not pass. More than a few people have accused me these past few years of essentially being a shill for Matrix, but I'm being fully transparent on how this test went because it was a surprise to me, and I think it's important to have that information out there. So how about the Duvetine? Well... I wound up having the same problems here that I did with the Matrix blanket, with a really alarming caveat. The duvetine completely caught fire and burned so out of control that I couldn't put it out with my Matrix blanket. To get this one under control, Mufasa and I actually had to dunk the end of the staff in the bucket of water I'd used for soaking our wet towel. The duvetine absolutely did not pass this test. And after that, Mufasa helpfully suggested muffling each wick individually with the blanket, even after covering the entire end. So we tried this one out with the wet towel. And it worked! I could hear sizzling every time it put out a wick. But it worked! For the first time, we were able to put out the dragon staff with some effort, but we were absolutely able to put it out. I'll add that the towel being wet also helped somewhat in doing this because it wasn't as hot to the touch as the matrix blanket and the duvetine had been. The wet towel passed. Given the way things worked out with all the other options, we decided not to even try this test with the dry towel. We learned from the duvetine going up that having anything with a lot of surface area catch on fire made our jobs dramatically harder. I'm not going to grade that for or against the dry towel because of lack of data, but I think the fact that I was reticent to even try it says a lot. Given our success putting out the dragon with the wet towel once we'd adjusted our technique, we went ahead and tried it again with the matrix blanket, and this time, success! No additional damage, and we got both ends out. The matrix blanket passed on second blush. So where does that leave us? I'm going to be real with you all. Doing these tests really surprised me. Quite a lot of what I thought I knew turned out to be incorrect. All told, all the safety blankets passed the Tier 1 tests. The towels and matrix blanket passed all the Tier 2 tests, while the duvetine struggled a bit putting out fresh wicks. In the third tier, the matrix blanket passed all marks on the usability front and put out the dragon once we'd perfected our technique. The wet towel was effective at putting out the dragon with our improved technique, but was a mixed bag on usability. The duvetine was completely incinerated by the dragon. Now there is clearly a long list of caveats here, and my honest answer is that at the end of the day, the thing that running this test really brought home for me is the importance of proper technique in putting out props. If you know the best way to do that, you can make do with less than stellar equipment. Not that I'd recommend it. But if you're using bad technique, there's probably no safety blanket that will compensate for that. You've seen it happen to me. And given everything I've seen running these tests, I am surprised to find myself saying that I think my preference in descending order now is matrix blanket, wet towel, and then duvetine at the bottom in terms of effectiveness and usability. Wild, right? I have zero doubt that many will take issues with either my methodology or results, and you know what? I welcome it. I'd love to see some more controlled tests and the resulting data out in the world. That's how science works. If you're dealing with more dangerous situations or more specific circumstances, consult with other experienced performers and professionals. And for the vast majority of you out there, don't try this stuff at home. Take what I've put out there and use it to inform your own safety habits. Learn proper technique for putting out your props, have backup blankets on hand, and please keep a fire extinguisher handy. Thanks to Mufasa for helping me out with these tests. I could not have gotten them done without you, and you can find links to his stuff down in the description. And a huge thank you to Matrix for sponsoring this video and investing in my putting to the test many assumptions we all make about fire safety. If you'd like to grab one of their amazing washable and custom embroidered fire safety blankets, which are still my go-to, use the code DREXFACTOR at checkout at matrixfiresafety.com to get a discount and bonus, it helps out the channel. Everybody wins! I also just wanted to put out a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these wonderful folks right here. These are my Flow Patrons on Patreon, and they, along with the wonderful people listed down in the description, make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. If you'd like to help me out in my mission to bring poise spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people learn to be creative with their brains and their bodies, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up. You can get early access to all of my content, a say in what topics I tackle in the future, plus some great extras and behind the scenes content. So go check that out. Please and thank you. Goodness, but this was an interesting test to run. I'm curious, what's the most difficult scenario that you've encountered with a fire safety blanket? Tell the story down in the comments. I'll leave a link to some other videos I've done on fire safety, including how to put out various props, down in the description, as well as up on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Be sure to get out and get your flow on, 
safely, and I will see you with a new video on Friday. Peace.